Hello there, Graham here. In this video, I'd like to explore the myth your rebreather is trying to kill you. In short, to save you any unnecessary viewing pleasure, it's not. It's trying to do the exact opposite. In fact, it's trying to keep you alive. So let's have a look at the controller as we run through a few sequences so that we can better understand what the rebreather is actually trying to do. Here I've turned on the oxygen. And when you turn on the oxygen and you're not breathing from the loop, the solenoid will fire and bring up to set point. We can see that we actually overshoot and we get up to 0.8 or 0.9. We should actually expect this because the controller is set up to control the PO2 in the whole loop. When you're not breathing from the loop and therefore moving gas around, the gas is stationary in the mixing chamber. And because the controller is set up to control the whole loop, we get an overshoot when we're not breathing from it. That addition of gas that you just heard is me doing a dill flush. It's a good idea to start with a known gas and that's why I usually start with a dill flush before breathing the loop. We can see that the controller is bringing the PO2 up as expected and just like when we turn the unit on there's an overshoot because the controller is only adding to the mixing chamber when we're not breathing gas around the entire loop. We can expect this overshoot when we're doing a dill flush underwater as well. And if you're at a set point of 1.2, we can observe high PO2s. And this can be a little bit unnerving if you don't understand what's going on. It's why we usually do a dill flush underwater from low set point, because it prevents unnecessary solenoid action. Now we can see that I've switched onto the loop. And when I breathe a whole lungful of air, into the loop, the PO2 decreases, and now the controller brings the PO2 up. We can see that it actually takes a while for the controller to do this. This is because the loop is very complicated, including your lungs and the counter lungs, the hoses, and the scrubber container, and it takes a while for your breathing to mix all that gas together. So we can see the PO2 goes up a bit, then down a bit, then up a bit, then down a bit. The magnitude of these ups and downs will reduce as the loop gets better and better mixed. So as the loop stabilizes it's worth noting how long it's taken to stabilize. It's very important to keep an easy and relaxed breathing because this aids the controller and the solenoid working together to maintain your PO2. Even with easy relaxed breathing it's going to take some time for the loop to stabilize and this is an important lesson for us to know when diving the rebreather. It takes time for things to adjust. Don't rush. Give the rebreather a chance to stabilize. Even before you try and achieve neutral buoyancy, you must have a fully mixed and stable loop at set point. So now in order to test the function of the rebreather, I'm gonna switch to high set point. Obviously we can't reach a set point of 1.2, but this will enable us to see that the solenoid is working correctly. And again, we see this up and down sequence of the PO2 as the gas equalizes throughout the loop. It's tempting to believe that add oxygen automatically equates to an increase in PO2, but there's a couple of things to remember. The first is the loop has to be mixed for the whole PO2 to go up in the loop. And the second thing is measuring actually only takes place at one point at the cells. So somewhat it depends where you're adding oxygen. The solenoid, for example, adds oxygen in a different place to the map. So I've now satisfied myself that the solenoid and the controller are working correctly and I can switch back to a low PO2. Now I've switched back, we can see the PO2 doesn't automatically drop back to 0.7. There are two ways to drop a high PO2. One is by adding low PO2 gas from the boolean and the other is to let your metabolism produce the PO2. Right on cue, you hear me venting from the nose and the ADV firing. This obviously drops the PO2, and if we want the PO2 to drop even faster, we can trigger the ADV manually, and that will really drop the PO2. Here we see that the PO2 drops down to 0.24, and then solenoid brings it back up again, exactly as we expect. This is in line with my thesis, the rebreather is not trying to kill you, but rather keep you alive. So again, we see a little bit of an overshoot, as expected. A bit less in this case, since we're breathing in the loop and we get some mixing going on. This variation up and down of the PO2 is expected as the loop stabilizes. 
If you're underwater and trying to maintain neutral buoyancy, this can obviously be a little bit of a challenge. Once you get more practice with the rebreather, you can do this on the fly and maintain loop volume, which will maintain your neutral buoyancy. Now let's try a flush of oxygen from the map. Obviously adding oxygen by the map is going to increase the PO2 as we'd expect, but it's adding at your exhale point and it takes a while for that gas to reach the measuring point of the uh, loop, which is the cells obviously, and then the oxygen's going to go past the cells as you keep breathing and then you're going to move lower PO2 gas from another point on the loop across the cells and we see the cells decrease again. In order for us to effectively flush with pure oxygen, which can be an advantage on decompression, we need to be able to remove low PO2 gas and replace it with oxygen. So it's quite important where you add oxygen in the breathing cycle. And a good way to think of this would be to uh, breathe in, which is putting low PO2 gas into your lungs, add oxygen to replace that volume into the loop, Venting from the nose removes that low PO2 gas that's in your lungs and completes the cycle. Now we have a relatively stable loop. All good things must come to an end. I over dump from my nose and that triggers the ADV. And what do we expect? We expect the PO2 to drop and that's exactly what's going to happen shortly. Depending how much gas you add by the ADV, or the manual add oxygen or how much gas the solenoid adds will determine how fast and how much the PO2 reacts. Again, remember we've got a single measurement point and several gas addition points and depending what gas you add and what point you add them to the loop will depend how quickly you see the effect on the controller. And now we've got a nice stable PO2 at 0.71. Over the background noise, you can probably notice the absence of solenoid activity. And that's because the PO2 is slightly above set point, so why would the solenoid fire? We need to wait for my metabolism to bring down the PO2 in order for the solenoid to need to fire. You've just heard the ADV fire, so your metabolism won't only reduce the PO2, it also reduces the loop volume as you remove oxygen from the loop. That's why the ADV fired, because the loop volume reduced to the point that the ADV was triggered. So, your rebreather is your friend. It won't try to kill you if you understand what it's trying to do. So now the PO2 is below set point. We're going to hear the solenoid clicking in a minute as it adds gas to keep us alive. Just try to understand what your breather is doing for you. It only adds oxygen to raise low PO2 and it can only add oxygen at the solenoid. The ADV and the MAV add at different points. So in order to truly master your rebreather, you need to understand all these things. Managing loop volume is like wrestling an eel. The harder you struggle against it, the harder it fights you. So keep your breathing easy and relaxed make adjustments in small increments and give them time to adjust and see what effect they've had on the loop PO2. In this way you can be truly awesome. And you know what else would be awesome? If you liked, commented and particularly subscribed. Thank you very much. Woo! <laughs>